Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting my paper uh, entitled Basic Relationship Between uh, Channel Coherence Time and Beam Width in Vehicular Channels. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Professor Robert Heath. Uh, future connected vehicles uh, will require the exchanging uh, a large amount of sensor data, for example, to uh, allow more automated driving. And these sensors could uh, include uh, long range. Uh, and short range radars, it could be LiDAR, it could be uh, cameras, and all sort of these uh, sensors that are used for uh, navigation, such as GPS. And this will lead to a large amount of uh, data to be exchanged, and one of the uh, uh, article has predicted that it could be uh, uh, an auto autonomous vehicle could uh, generate up to one terabyte of data in a single trip. And this large amount of data is unlikely to be uh, supportable by uh, 4G, current 4G cellular system, or even the uh, state-of-the-art uh, vehicular standards, which is known as DSRC. And so there is a need to, uh, uh, to, do, uh, to do design in more advanced communications to uh, support such large amount of data. And one of the possibilities is to go to uh, higher frequencies, such as millimeter waves, where we have a huge amount of spectrum available. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, there is a, a huge, a, a large uh, surge of interest into millimeter wave is that uh, right now the hardware technology has uh, become available. It is now possible to, uh, to produce low-cost CMOS devices, and this uh, created a, a, a large interest in this uh, millimeter wave. To, uh, in application to, uh, uh, to communications. For example, it has already been used in the uh, wireless LAN, such as the uh, IEEE uh, AO2.11 AD, which is at 60 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. And uh, there's also been uh, a, dis uh, a lot of research in the uh, five, the fifth uh, cellular networks. And for automotive applications, uh, millimeter wave has been used uh, for automotive radars, and uh, and so uh, these automotive suppliers they do have some uh, know-how in in handling uh, millimeter waves, uh, which could give a potential uh, for joining, combining uh, radars and communication to uh, produce even more efficient systems in in the future. Uh, this slide shows the. Uh, uh, technical background in uh, our research problem addressed in this paper. Uh, one of the main concerns in going to millimeter wave is the uh, concern regarding the Doppler spread. Uh, according to classical uh, model for communication, which assume that the signals are coming from all different directions, and the receive uh, beam pattern is uniform like this. Uh, it can be shown that the Doppler spread is inversely proportional to the uh, carrier wave length. So what this means is that uh, if you move from a typical uh, cellular uh, frequency up to uh, gigahertz to 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band, you would experience 30x increase in the Doppler. And however, this th this uh, this statement is not uh, accurate because it does not taken into account the fact that millimeter wave will use uh, directional beams because of the uh, propagation uh, characteristic at this uh, frequency. Uh, if you can see the directional beams, it would look something like this uh, figure shown on the right. Uh, this uh, arrow represents uh, a signal which has a certain Doppler shift. And so the, the, this uh, range here represents the uh, range that this Doppler spread is coming in to the uh, receiver. And so the larger the beam width, the larger this range is, and that means the, lar uh, the, the larger the Doppler spread. And if you use the narrower beams, the uh, Doppler spread also reduced because this range that the, that the, the Doppler shift coming in is also uh, decreased. So we can say the direction of beams, we can expect that the direction of beam could reduce the Doppler effect. And this is the uh, main contribution of this paper is we quantify the, this, uh, this, this effect and so that we can quantify the uh, time variation of the vehicular channel with these directional beams. And there are two important effects that we need to consider in 
doing this uh, in the vehicular channels. One is that uh, because of the directional beams, we need to consider the beam pointing errors due to the receiver motion and also the Doppler spread as in the typical uh, classical channel. So to deal with this, we, uh, propose, uh, we have proposed the, uh, the, a model to capture the beam pointing errors. We also, uh, based on this uh, model, we derive a channel time correlation functions which uh, take into account both effects of the uh, pointing error and Doppler uh, effect. And then using this uh, correlation function, we derive uh, coherence times and uh, to, to, to connect it with the uh, beam width. Our result shows that uh, there is an optimal, non-zero optimal beam width that uh, maximizes the uh, channel coherence times. And uh, this is uh, in contrast to existing works that uh, because they don't consider this pointing error, it leads to a non-intuitive uh, conclusion that if, we, if the beam width goes to zero, the channel coherence time will go to infinity. Some of related works are shown in this slide. So there are also some work that characterize the uh, beam width and the coherence times. Uh, one of the earlier work from 2000, but the, the, the result here is a little bit uh, unintuitive. And uh, the, there's later works that also have uh, of quite simple expression to relate the beam with uh, the coherence time and the number of antennas, assuming uh, a linear uniform uniform linear array, but they have only result for the uh, pointing direction of 90 degree only. And other related work uh, related to the uh, correlation function in uh, non-isotropic scattering environment. Uh, there are different approaches in this uh, in this line of research. One is as shown here by this one from 2008 uh, is they use the uh, infinite sum of Bessel function to decompose the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the antennas pattern and the uh, power angular spectrum. In doing this, they can, uh, they can derive the coherence, uh, the correlation function for any uh, power angular profile, but then the uh, resulting solution is, because it involved the, 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 diff, uh, the infinite sum of Bessel function is not uh, amendable for further uh, analysis. Another approach uses some, a certain form of the, uh, assume a certain form of the power angular spectrum. And uh, for example, here they use a one misses uh, distribution function for that. And this leads to a more tractable uh, solution for and we, we also use uh, following this type of, uh, of, of uh, line of research here that assume a certain type of, uh, a certain shape of the uh, power angular spectrum. And recently there is another work that tried to characterize the pointing error and uh, coherence time, but this work was for a uh, backhaul application which is static and the uh, they start, the, and, and the source of the pointing error is due to wind induced vibrations. So we can see that all this uh, work related to the uh, coherence time and co correlation function and coherence time does not have a pointing error, and the work that is on pointing error does not have mobility. In our work, we uh, incorporate both of these effects. This, is, uh, this slide shows our channel models. We assume a wise and stationary and correlated scattering model. Uh, the, the channel model is uh, shown here. So what it represents here is this channel is assumed that uh, the channel is composed of uh, a sum of planar, planar waves. So it is, this is just a plane waves coming in uh, from different directions and they are weighted by this uh, effective power angular spectrum. So what I mean by effective power angular spectrum here is the actual power angular spectrum without the uh, antenna patterns, and this will be applied by an antenna patterns. So what is seen at the receiver uh, after the uh, antennas is this effective power angular spectrum. Uh, the, we assume that this power angular spectrum uh, take the form of one misses distribution function, which has these shapes here, as shown here, and the expression is shown here where this uh, I0 is the 
uh, modify based on function uh, of the first type. And if we plot this into a polar coordinate, we can get uh, something like this, which somehow resemble uh, an antenna beams, a main loop one. Uh, this is the uh, model for to capture uh, pointing errors. We assume that the uh, scatterer are located on this ring with a radius of uh, dr. If the receiver moves from point, point A to point B, and without changing its uh, pointing direction as shown here, you can see that there is, uh, equivalently, there is uh, an, a pointing error of this uh, amount that is represented by data mu here. So this data mu can be computed from this uh, geometry, from the geometry as shown here, and with uh, an approximation of small data mu, we can get to a simplified expression as shown here. And this data d is the, uh, the, the, the distance between A and B, which can be computed from the speed of the vehicle. And the speed of the vehicle, you can connect it with the uh, maximum Doppler shift. And so we get an expression that is related to the Doppler, maximum Doppler shift here, uh, related to the, the, the pointing error here. So with this model, we can now ca ca compute the correlation functions. Uh, the definition of our correlation function is shown here, which is based on the, uh, the, the complex channel coefficients. So there's two main steps in this uh, derivation. The first one is that we need to apply the uh, uncorrelated scattering assumptions. After doing that, what the expression that we get is this one. And this P actually the one misses distribution function, but I didn't uh, explicitly uh, express it here. And for the second steps, if we need to do an approximation based on the small pointing errors, with that approximation, what it helps us is we can uh, decouple this data mu, the de dependence of data mu in this uh, integral, take it outside the integral. And that will simplify our expressions. And the end result is this one is given by at uh, the bottom here. So what is interesting about this uh, Correlation function is that with uh, we can see that the Doppler effect and the uh, effect of the pointing errors here are approximately separable. So it's it's the, the two effect kind of like separable here. That that's that's what we found with this expression. But only this this only uh, approximation. So we need to verify it. And so this is uh, some verification, numerical verification that we did to show that the derived expression to, uh, to guarantee that the derived expression is uh, accurate. So some of the simulation parameters here is uh, the speed is around the high highway speed of 30 meter per second and the transmitter receiver distance 50 meters. This is only used to generate the uh, channel uh, in using the uh, sum of sinusoid approach. And uh, so it does not relate it to our uh, derived expression. This uh, the carrier frequency is 60 gigahertz, and the scattering radius is around 100 uh, wavelengths, and the beam width is 8 degree. So we plot here three uh, curves here. One is called exact. By exact here, I mean this. We compute this uh, this expression numerically. Uh, we do that that uh, integration numerically. And for the approximation is what we derive the, the derived expressions. And the simulation is we use the sum of sinusoid approach to, uh, to compute the channel coefficients and then compute the uh, correlation function. So we plot it here for different pointing angles. One is at 80 degree, one is at 10 degree. So when the, we can see that when the pointing area is large, this uh, fit is it fit very tight. When the pointing Angle is small, the fit is a little loose, but still pretty good. And also noted that uh, this pointing angle at the 90 degree corresponding to the case when the fading is the fastest. And so we can see that as this, uh, this larger pointing angle, the, the, the decrease in, this, uh, in the correlation function is faster than at lower uh, pointing angle here. So with that, we have to, uh, with uh, the 
correlation function verified, we now uh, proceed to the co coherence time derivation. So we derive the correlation time based on this definition given here, which is we define it as the time that the uh, correlation function decreases to a certain level r here for some predefined value that uh, given by the user. It can be 0 0.9 or it can be 0 0.5. So the main difficulty in this derivation is the involvement of the uh, modified Bessel function. So what we did here is we we, we apply this called asymptotic approximation to this uh, uh, to our equation. So this uh, asymptotic approximation is given by this equation, which is valid for uh, when z is large. And so applying this approximation and do some tedious algebra, what we arrive at is this uh, equation here. So one of the main one of the uh, main terms here, one of the defining terms here is this exponential terms here. It characterizes the, uh, the behavior of this uh, right-hand side term. So uh, this, it's, it depends on the pointing angle. If the pointing angle is zero, this is purely imaginary. So if you take the uh, absolute value, it goes away. But if it is a complex, a real complex number, then you will get uh, an, an exponential term that make this decrease a lot, fast, very fast, with uh, exponential speed. So with that, with that observation, we divide it into two cases. One case is, is when the, uh, the pointing angle is small. So that means you can uh, ignore this, uh, approximate it as one. And when it's not, then you have to make some more uh, uh, simplification here. So with that, we do some more algebra, and what we arrived at is this expression here. When the, uh, when, when the pointing angle is small, we get these expressions, uh, and this theta is the, the beam width in radian. And so to make it more intuitive, what does this mean here? We, have, uh, we can simplify it by neglecting the pointing uh, area. So by neglecting the pointing area, I mean that we can just increase this, uh, the uh, radius of the scatter area to uh, infinity. So with that simplification, what you get is this. And so you can see that the, uh, the coherence time is inversely proportional to the square of the beam width. And when, when uh, the pointing angle is not small, the expression is a little more complicated. But we can also simplify this case similarly when we assume that uh, we, we neglect the pointing errors and also we assume that the pointing Angle, uh, angle is at the worst case, which is 90 degree. In that case, we can simplify the expression to this, uh, this one. And then you can apply uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor expansion to, get, uh, to simplify it and can show that it actually is proportional to 1 over theta. So we can say that before the pointing error kicks in, the uh, channel coherence times increase at least on the order of 1 over theta, where theta is the, the beam width. So now we give some uh, verifications, numerical verification of our derived coherence time expressions. Uh, I plotted here for three different uh, curves here. One is called exact, which is, which means that we uh, we compute this uh, equation numerically, and the approximation is the one that we just derived, and this one no angular difference is the one that we neglect the uh, pointing error. So you can see that if you neglect the pointing error, the uh, coherence time will keep increasing to infinity as the beam width goes to zero. And the and for the when when we don't neglect that, it will kick in at some point here that you can see that it will go down and it will go to zero at the when the beam width goes to zero. Uh, so this one is for the pointing angle of one degree. We also see, uh, try to see how much sensitive it is to the pointing angle, and we set it here to five degrees. And you can see that the, the approximate get a little loose, but still we get the same order of uh, magnitude for the uh, coherence time. And also note that this uh, expression here, uh, that the, the parameter which you see is that 30 meter per second speed of the vehicle and at 60 gigahertz. So we can see that the, as the, the beam is too narrow, 
the, it will suffer from the, the pointing error here. As you can see, uh, the, the slope that it go down as the beam rate goes to zero. So for the case of the when, when the pointing angle is not small, here we plot it for different uh, pointing angle of 20, 30, 40, and 90 degree here with the same parameters as just in the previous uh, case. So what we see here is that uh, there is a point where the, uh, the approximation diverges. This is because of the singularity in our derived uh, expression. And uh, it happens at around roughly uh, half the, uh, the pointing angle. So we can say that it's valid around up to half of the pointing angle. So uh, we can see, but otherwise it gets pretty close to the exact solution. And from the result here for this speed of around the highway speed and at the 60 giga at, uh, carry frequency, the conclusion here would be that if we assume that uh, the packet is around 100 microsecond, which is quite likely for, for uh, Wi-Fi, uh, 60 giga Wi-Fi systems, it's we, we, must, we likely need around 20 degree beams. That means if it is uh, the here, the worst case, we consider the worst case here of uh, 90 degree pointing angles, then the coherence time would be, if you want the coherence time to be 100, more than 100 microseconds, it would be less than 100, uh, 20 degree, as shown here. So as a conclusion, we have proposed a model to capture pointing angle for the first time, and we derived the uh, coherence time as a function of the beam width uh, first, we, uh, we, we incorporate, uh, for this derivation, we incorporate both the Doppler spread and the beam pointing errors as, uh, as defined by our, uh, our model. And then we use this derived channel uh, co correlation function to derive uh, coherence times. And our results show that there is a beam width, uh, the non-zero beam width that, maximize the, uh, that maximizes the uh, coherent times which is uh, in contrast to existing work that show that the coherence time would go to infinity as the beam width goes to zero. So, yes, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.